My featured guest today, James Turk, founder of Gold Money and co-author of The Collapse of the Dollar and How to Profit from It. Welcome, James. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you. I'd like to begin, if we could, our discussion with a recent article uh, you penned titled, Numbers Don't Lie. You warned that hyperinflation of the U.S. dollar is looming. In fact, you've been warning of that for about a decade now. Crude oil, of course, uh, running back towards that $90 barrel number, West Texas Intermediate Crude. Copper, of course, broken through $4 a pound. You note, interestingly, that these are not commodities that are in short supply. They're actually an abundance of these resources. So something else is going on here. Yeah, I've been talking about the collapse of the dollar for a decade, but yeah, I haven't been talking about hyperinflation for about 18 months or 12 months. And the reason was is that it was, it was inevitable that the dollar was going to collapse, but I wasn't sure which way. But now it looks like it is going to be a hyperinflationary collapse. And what's basically happening is the Federal Reserve is printing too much money. And when that happens, uh, any reading of monetary history shows that people will hoard things, uh, tangible assets, to avoid the, the money which is being debased and losing purchasing power. So what you see happening is the price of copper, the price of crude, price of crude oil, and of course the price of gold and silver have been rising as people come to understand that this policy of QE, quantitative easing, being pursued by the Federal Reserve is, is destroying the dollar. In fact, you know, Bernanke's come out and said it. He said he wants to raise the rate of inflation. Well, everybody who's been around uh, and old enough to remember the 1970s knows what inflation does to the purchasing power of the dollar. So it's not any surprise that the uh, commodities are rising. Uh, but it's this money printing that ultimately is going to destroy the dollar and I think lead to hyperinflation. Hyperinflation, galloping inflation, runaway inflation. These terms have been misused in recent years. Explain why things really are different this time, that we might actually see something that has not occurred within the contiguous United States for well over a century. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you're right about the terms being misused. There are really two elements to hyperinflation, and you don't necessarily need to have a rapid increase in the quantity of money. That just sort of gets things started. Uh, as the new money is being printed, people uh, see it's being debased. And what's really important, important in terms of causing hyperinflation is the loss of confidence in the currency, and you get a flight from the currency. In other words, the demand for holding the currency declines. People prefer other alternatives principally tangible assets. And that's where I think we are at the early stages of. You know, I've seen this for a few months now overseas. You know, people outside the U.S. are more perceptive of what's going on with the dollar than people within the U.S., and that's logical because people within the U.S. are using dollars day-to-day, -day, getting paid in dollars, and don't necessarily see the big picture. But if the dollar is not your natural currency, you're going to think twice before you actually hold it. And there are a lot of people overseas, particularly in Asia and the Middle East, that would rather own a million dollars of copper than have a million dollars sitting in a bank account. Because at the end of the day, they can use the copper in their factory, but the dollars in the bank account have a lot of risk and they're not earning enough interest income to offset the risk of holding those dollars. So hyperinflation is really two things. It's you know the Federal Reserve or the central bank printing uh, currency, turning government debt uh, into, into, uh, into currency, uh, you know, the government's on a spending spree. It can't borrow enough money from the market, and so it turns to the central bank to get the money it needs or the currency it needs. And then the second thing is the flight from the currency is the demand for the currency falls. And those two things are what really does make a hyperinflation. You know, the world is turning its back on the dollar. And, you know, we can just think back to a couple of decades ago, 1980s, 1990s, when the world was hoarding dollars as though it was a precious metal. And uh, we seem to have a sea change event now where that process is reversing itself. But I wanted to move on, if we could, to another part. You might say the second part of your latest article. And you talk about long-term interest rates, how these rates have finally started to push up sharply, and we've seen that in just the past three or four weeks. Uh, treasuries have been un under incredible pressure, short term and long term, and we're seeing rates soar. Yeah, it's another um, important development and another important sign that we're heading toward hyperinflation. Here you have you know, Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Federal Reserve, announcing that he's going to be buying $600 billion of government paper. And Despite the demand that this 600 billion he's going to create, the bond market is uh, bond market yields are rising 
because there are more people selling uh, than he was prepared to buy. And I think the message here is is that the people who own bonds finally are starting to catch on that Bernanke is true to his word about creating inflation. And in, in an inflationary environment, you don't want to own bonds, particularly with bonds at these historic low levels, because you're not going to get enough compensation to offset holding any bonds that you purchase at these prices. So avoid, you know, basically dollar-denominated assets, but particularly any kind of long-term dollar-denominated assets. I think the second thing, too, you know, which goes back to the article, is uh, I had a chart there showing how the deficit remains huge, uh, even though federal government revenue has picked up a little bit over the past few months. You know, we're still talking about trillion-dollar deficits. We're $14 trillion now in the national debt. That doesn't include the unfunded liabilities. And just a couple of years ago, before the financial crisis started, it was only $8 trillion of uh, government debt. You know, it's, it's increasing at a very rapid rate, which, again, is another sign that hyperinflation is coming. The U.S. government is spending more money than the market is willing to lend to it, with the consequence that its only alternative is to print it at the central bank, and that's what quantitative easing is all about. So bond yields are rising, uh, and I think that's another important signal that the, the dollar is heading in the wrong direction. Folks have been reporting about difficulty retrieving their gold and silver from their safety deposit boxes. One Swiss banking client who was refused his gold, actually $40 million in gold, after a couple of months of legal battles there. And then, of course, another 20,000 ounces of silver were refused a different investor in a banking system that was generally perennially known for its safety and anonymity. Yeah, uh, Switzerland is still a major financial center, and there's still, you know, dozens if not hundreds of really good quality Swiss banks, but there are some apparent uh, banks which, you know, cause me to worry a little bit and cause, you know, my hair to stand on the back of my neck, not because I have any money or gold in them, but just generally what would happen if, you know, these guys are running a fractional reserve system with gold supposedly in allocated storage or silver supposedly in allocated storage. Uh, You know, I, I, I don't quite know what to make of it, but, you know, I've seen enough instances now that uh, there's something wrong there. And um, the rule of thumb is, that I like to use, is keep your gold and silver someplace safe. You don't want to put it in a bank. Banks aren't in the business of storing. They're in the business of lending. And as a consequence, you want to keep your gold and silver someplace where uh, the company's in the business of storing. Therefore, you've got to go to private vaults uh, and you know private storage companies, uh, and you're going to get much more safety there than you would with a bank. If you insist on putting it in a bank, make sure you get your um, gold and silver independently audited by a third-party independent audit. And if the bank doesn't let you send in the auditor, that's another red flag that you should get your metal out of there as quickly as possible. You know, the recent explosion in price in precious metals has left millions by the sidelines. But uh, you advocate an interesting plan here uh, that can help anyone build a solid portfolio via dollar cost averaging. And, you know, folks can still sleep well at night using this method. I wonder if you could let folks know just what you're suggesting. Yeah, you know, people get scared when they look at the gold price of 1400 uh, and admittedly the price is high. But the price is high for the simple reason that the dollar has been so badly debased uh, and continues to be debased, and policies of the Federal Reserve will debase it even more, so it's going to lose more purchasing power, and the gold price will go higher. So what you really want to do is every month or whenever your budget allows, just you know buy some gold, buy some silver if you're prepared to take the volatility that comes with silver that you don't see in gold or the extra volatility that you see in silver, put it that way, and uh, save it. You know, you're saving sound money, and uh, saving is a good thing. Saving sound money is an excellent thing, particularly when we're in a financial bust, which we are. And this, these savings will enable you to preserve your purchasing power through the t- tough times we still have coming before this bust is finally finished. And you'll be happy when we come out the other side of the valley with your purchasing power intact with your gold or silver. So the key to look at is not the price of gold, but the value. And gold is still good value. It still has a lot of usefulness. Uh, It's a tangible asset that's money, which is no one's counterparty risk. Uh, In in other words, it's not based on someone's promise. And as a consequence, um, it's going to become increasingly in demand as more promises are broken and as the currency uh, turmoil and sovereign debt crisis around the world uh, takes another turn for the worse.
I'm completely on board with you, ignoring the price and holding this as an insurance policy. But there are going to be some skeptical listeners out there who remember that ominous year, 1980, where we saw the metals begin a two-decade-long struggle. I think it would be worthwhile to just quickly give a primer here as to why this time around we may not see such a bear market unfold. This could be a permanent plateau of higher prices. It's it's very simple, uh, Chris. Back in 1980, Paul Volcker, the chairman of the Federal Reserve at the time, kept raising interest rates until the bank prime rate was 21%. T-bond yields were 15 16%. Um, and what that did is it caused people to get out of tangible assets and go back into financial assets. Ben Bernanke is doing the exact opposite of what Paul Volcker did. He's keeping interest rates near zero. He's debasing the purchasing power of the dollar, whereas Paul Volcker went, uh, raised interest rates to preserve the dollar, preserve its purchasing power, and convince people that the dollar wasn't going to collapse. You're not seeing that from the Federal Reserve today. And until Ben Bernanke follows uh, Paul Volcker's steps, which he probably won't because he's following different, he's going to fall off the edge of the cliff in terms of purchasing power, and gold is the way to protect yourself when the turmoil comes. I wonder if you could very briefly give some contact information. We have about 20 seconds left. Yeah, I'm at uh, goldmoney.com. Uh, we're a very convenient, uh, uh, safe, and economical way to buy and sell it's, uh, gold and silver and store it online. Very good. Well, James, uh, have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, sir. Thanks. Same to you, Chris.